Let's go. But you gotta keep on going. So you can keep on growing. And you know what? You need some help from the law. We got 20 minutes, y'all. I gotta keep going. Stop! We're just so glad to be here. We said before, but I just gotta say this about Brother and Sister Wallace. Everything that has been said and done tonight, I'm sure God is smiling on his throne. Because the man of God and his beautiful wife are being honored for doing the service that he requests us to do. And that's just love God and loving one another. And if we can simply get that message, I believe we'll attract the message and they will see that there is a truth and reality to, of serving the living God. We're gonna keep going. Gonna take you back just a step or two, I think. They say, wait. Some of these songs were requested. Can't do them all. Got about six minutes. I get it in right here. At the end of a long, drawn out day, when you've been out and about getting ready for this wonderful anniversary, 21 years, y'all. You ought to give yourself a hand. I know you've been working, so give yourselves a hand. And if those of you who are applauding the applaudees, give them a hand also. It takes work to stay together and get things going for the kingdom. Sometimes, like the preacher said, you got to go to your closet and, and get on your knees and cry. You got to talk to the Father and chat with Tell him not the word that you want to come from. You got to tell him the fuss. You got to tell him the fight. You got to tell him no sisters out there are back bite. Yeah, sometimes you got to go right and talk to God. Is that all right? We're going to tell you about our precious Lord because he's just, he's so good. Y'all want to hear about him? Here you go. It's certainly good to be here today. Uh, it's always good to be in the house of the Lord. But it's just good to be alive in the world that is, is dying every day. Amen, amen. Uh, with, with the different illnesses and the different things that are happening, uh, uh, it's, just, it's always good to know that, that uh, God has given us another chance and another day uh, to see uh, a beautiful day and also to, to worship him and to become better people and better Christians for his, for his kingdom. Amen. Are y'all happy to be here today? Amen. 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 Won't you stand on your feet with me? Won't you stand on your feet with me as we, as we call ourselves to worship on this morning? It's been a trying week uh, for me, I know. Uh, on yesterday, we did have a, a, a wonderful time on yesterday doing the uh, back-to-school uh, school supply drive yesterday. It was it was a hot day. It was it was fun, uh, but but I'm tired. <laughs> I'm tired, so it's okay though. I love doing things for the Lord and doing things for the community as well. And it was it was great to see kids come in and get school supplies and be excited about it and happy about it. Get out there and play, uh, eat a little bit, and just have some fun. So that was great. That was great. And, and those of you who didn't get a chance to come out, we, have, we, have, we advise you to come out on next, on next year when we do this again. 
uh, uh, if you get a chance to and you're not afraid to. Amen? Amen? Uh, so we just come at this time, at this particular time, to just, just call you to worship, uh, get our minds and our thoughts and our, our hearts ready for worshiping God on this morning. Uh, whatever it is that you may have went through last week, let's, let's forget about it. Uh, let's, let's take this time to uh, focus and, and center our minds and our hearts directly on God and think about the things that he's done for us. Regardless of what situations we may have been in or may be in right now, God is still good. Amen. Amen. God has made a way out of no way for every one of us. No one in here can say that he has not done that. There's so many different things that we could have been in right now. So many different uh, situations we could be in. Uh, There's so so many things happening around us, but God has still made a way for us to be here. That is just a blessing within itself, and we should thank him for that. We should always remember God in the midst of our troubles, because in the darkest hour is when God normally going to show up and show out. Amen? In the darkest hour, when you think that he's not going to be there, he's right there waiting, waiting for you to just say, Lord, please come in and make a difference. But we, we always seem to just fall away from from the exact thing that he wants us to draw closer to, and that's to him. A lot of times we, we, we take our minds to different places. We, we go and try to search for different avenues to make this thing happen, but we just forget a lot of times that God is just waiting for us to call his name and say, Lord, please, at this time, just bless me. Please come down, Lord, and just, just bless me. And he will, and he's waiting. So anytime you're feeling down and out, just know that God is waiting. But right now, we come here to worship him, and we want to worship him in spirit and in truth because that's what the Bible teaches. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Now, Brother Wallace is not here on this morning. He's out. He's in Jackson, Mississippi, there at the Capitol Street Church of Christ, uh, blessing souls down in the middle Mississippi area. We ask that you continue to keep your prayers uh, upon him and please bless him in his, in his every endeavor. We also have uh, Brother Justin Wallace, who is at Camp Creek this morning. Uh, for the first time, he'll be there, and we have a lot of members that, were he- that w- would be here that are going to, to help celebrate that, that uh, endeavor for him as well. Uh, this is a huge thing for Justin, and we, we love him, and we wish him well. So we want to thank-, thank him for everything that he's done for us and everything he's done for the brotherhood, and we salute him on this morning as he speaks uh, to those people in Atlanta, Georgia, at Camp Creek Church of Christ. Uh, this morning, won't, why don't we just, just give God a hand clap of praise for all the greatness that he's brought us. All the things that God has done for you. You ought to just, just clap for him and just praise him. You know, we always say God woke me up this morning. He started me on my way. He put shoes on my feet. He put clothes on my back. He put food on my table. And when nobody else was able, God was able. We always say that. Oh, but there's so many things, so many other things that we can say about God. So many other things that we can praise him for. So many things that we can shout about. We can praise him. We can clap. We can shout. We can say, Lord, you've been so good to me. Lord, when I didn't know what I was going to do, you stepped in and you made a way. Lord, when I didn't know how I was going to make it through it, Lord, you came in and you made a way. Lord, you've been so good to me. And we know that God is good. Amen. Let's praise him this morning. Let's praise him this morning. Let's praise him with every fiber of our body. I love to praise him. I love to praise his name. I love to praise him. I love to praise his I love to praise him. I love to praise his I love to, I love to pray, praise his holy name. I love to praise his name. I love to praise his name. I love to praise him. I love to praise his name. I love to praise him. I love to praise his name. I love to, uh, yeah, 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 he's my rock, he's my 
Barack, Barack, ma. He, he's a wheelie them in the middle, in the middle. I know, I know he'll never, never let me down. He's just a jewel that I have found. Yes, I'm singing hallelujah. Hallelujah, yes, I love to praise this. I'm singing hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord, yes, I love to praise this. I'm singing hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord, yes, I love to praise this. I love to. I love to. I love to. I love to. Praise his holy name. I don't know if I can uh, get, get there, but I'm a soul to try. Y'all hear me out there? Well, and I know Jesus. Jesus is my rock, my rock, my sword and shield. Uh, he's a wheel, he's a wheel. In the middle of love, he guides my footsteps, guides my footsteps, and he wipes away. Well, and I know Jesus, Jesus is my rock, my rock, my well, rock of ages. Clear for me, and let me hide myself in thee. I get tired, shown up, I get weak, I get worn, oh yes, Lord, having read in your word, how you feed the little bitty birds, and I know Jesus, Jesus is my rock, my rock, oh, rock of ages. Clap for me and let me hide myself in thee. I get tired, show sure enough, I get weak, I get worn. Oh, yes, Lord, having read in your word how he feeds the little bitty birds, and I know Jesus, Jesus is my rock. My rock, my soul is shield. Uh, if I walk in the pathway of duty, if I were to the close of the day, I shall see the great king in his beauty when I've gone the last mile of the way. When I've gone the last mile of the way, yeah. I shall rest at the close of the day, for I know there are joys that await me when I've gone the last mile. If I walk in the pathway of duty, yeah, and if I work to the close of the day, I shall see the great king in his beauty. When I've gone the last mile of the way, oh, when I've gone the last mile of the way, yeah, I shall rest at the close of the day. 
There I know, there I draw that awaits me. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and I'm gone the last mile of the way, Lord, mile of the way. After this, we will have scripture, open scripture. Try this old song. Trouble sometimes are here. Fill him in his heart with fear. Freedom we all, oh dear. Now is it stay? Humble your hearts to God. Save from the chair and sing rise. See the way pilgrims tried Christians away. And my Jesus is come a morning or night. A minute will meet. A trumpet will sound. And all of So me and me cold, losing their homes of gold. This is God's word is told. Evil about when all has come to pass, nearing the end, at last it will come. Very fast, trumpets will sound, and my mind and my Jesus is come a morning or night, a minute will meet, trumpets will sound, and all of and all of the Free from our cares, rising up in the sky, telling this sinful world, bye, 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 on what we then we shall fly, glory to share, and my mind. you today to read our Lord's Day scripture and our scripture this morning will come from the book of Psalms chapter 119 verses 67 and 71 our scripture this morning will come from the book of Psalms chapter 119 verses 67 and 71 and the scripture reads before I was afflicted 
I went astray. But now have I kept thy word. In verse 71, it is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn thy statutes. I just read from you from the book of Psalms, chapter 119, verses 67 and 71. May God have a blessing to the hearer, readers, and doer of his word. At this time, I'll get our hearts and minds ready for prayer. May we all stand, please. Thank you, you Lord. Oh, Lord, I thank, thank you, thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, thank you, Lord. My Lord, I just want, I want to thank you, Lord. You've been my best friend. I really don't deserve it, but you've been, you've been my, my best friend. Oh, Lord, you've been, you've been my, my best friend. And I just want to, yeah, thank you, Lord. Our Father in heaven, we come this morning with thanksgiving in our heart. Thanking you, God, for being so good and so kind. Thank you, Father, for watching over and keeping us in your care last night. Right early this morning, you touched us with a finger of thy love, woke us up on time. Able to come out to the house of prayer one more time, Father. Father, we thank you for your son, Jesus. Thank you for, get, for him giving his life for us, Father. Yes, Father, we realize that we need you and we can't do nothing without you. Father, we ask you to go in the hospital this morning. Church and heal is to be thy holy will. Father, we know you're able to do all things but fail. And that's why we put our trust in you, Father. Father, we ask you to be with our members as you're away from us, Father. Father, as you protect them, keep them from all hurt, harm, and danger. Then, Father, be with Brother Zechariah. He come this morning to preach thy word. Yes. We pray, Father, that the thing that he has started, Father, he called back to his mind at this time. Yes. Father, may we leave this place and say it was good for us to be here. Yes. And, Father, bless us in the name of Jesus, we pray. Yes. Amen. Amen. There is beyond me as a blue A God comes in from human side He tinted skies with heavenly hue And framed the world with his great might There is a God, he is alive In him we live and we survive from the star God created man. He is our God, the great I am. Secure is life from mortal mind. And God holds the germ within his hand. No men may search, they cannot find. Does understand? There is a God, He is alive. In Him we live and we survive. From the star, God created man. He is our God, the great I am. Our God, who sun upon a tree, a lot was willing there to give. Then he from sin might set me free. 
and never more with him could live. And there is a God, he is alive, in him we live and we survive. From the star God created man, he is our God, the Pray for me. <laughs> he is alive. In him we live. And we serve. Growth. I have been asked to take care of the ministry this morning. I've tried to do the best I can to take care of the ministry this morning, but before I do that, I want to give a, uh, a uh, shout out to those who come out yesterday with Searin and the group come out yesterday in this hot sun to have a school supply uh, give out. I want to be giving them a good hand clap of praise for them. You know. Time. It, it was very hot out there yesterday, very hot. I done got old now, y'all. I can't stand too much heat. So I want to tell Stephen, y'all, keep up the good work. Keep up the good work. Don't, 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 don't go down, go up. Go up with it. Go up with it. And we ask you guys to continue to help them, get behind them and help them when they're doing good work. You know, just keep going, keep going, keep going. Like that little bunny rabbit on the TV. That energy money, just keep it going, keep going, keep going. And God's going to bless you one day. He's going to really bless you one day. This morning we have a preacher uh, by the name of Zachariah Smith from Memphis up there. Let's give him our undivided attention. I'm sure you have a word to share with us this morning. And see when you done put something up here in the front of me that I can't hardly see. I told you I ain't got old. But it's Zachariah, Zachariah, Brother Zachariah Smith. We have another verse for song. And another voice we hear is Brother Zachariah Smith from Memphis. Thank you. Let's see. Yes, sir. Since he didn't read it, I ain't going to read it either. <laughs> God sent us a man of God. Amen. <laughs> you know that there. There are times when your friend will seem few. You need someone, someone to lean on. You need somebody, yes, to see you through. Oh, but that's the time to call the Lord. See, God can give every one of us whatever we need, whatever we want, even though sometimes God seems kind of slow. Just take his hand and don't you ever let go, don't let go. Have you ever thought about, thought about all of the things that God has, he's done for you. 
you, you will. Even when your family hasn't let you down. Oh, when your closest friends can't be found. Just remember that God is up in a heaven and he's looking down all of your needs I know he will supply even though sometimes God might seem kind of slow all you gotta do is take his hand and don't you ever ever let go don't let go and have you ever thought about ever thought about all of the things that god has he's done for you oh he's done for one more thing way well, when you're when your health is failing you Oh, and you just don't think that you can make it through Your room may be filled, may be filled with friends who cry Oh, just close your eyes, close your eyes, go on and die Go on and die, cause you're still blessed <laughs> Though you'll be missed by friends Oh, and if they hold out They'll see you once again Up in heaven Have you ever thought about Thought about every little old thing That God has He's done for you You all of you too I know God gave you everything Gave you eyes to see Gave you legs to walk yeah. You got a mouth to talk Do you know, do you know, do you know, do you know, do you know won't you stand on your feet if you know how good God has been to you? Do you know? Hey, he's been my father since I lost him. And he's a mother whenever I need him to be. He's a brother when I'm in trouble. And He's a sister like no other. I know, I know this God's been good. But I just can't think about all the things at one time that he's done for me. But when I lay down to sleep at night, God is by my side. Oh, and when I rise up in the morning, I know that it's God who gets me going. Oh, all through the day, God helps me keep the faith. And late in the evening, I know that it's God that's watching me. But when times get hard, I count my blessings and name the one by one. Sometimes I have to get on my knees and count all my blessings to see what the Lord, all he's done for me, for me, for me. Let me ask you something. Have you ever thought about all the times he's brought you out? Do you ever stop to say, thank you, Lord, for one more day? Do you ever wonder why 
you're still living while others are dying do you ever take the time thank the lord for letting you out every day every day he lets you rise every day every day he keeps blessing us in every way no matter what we do he comes and he makes a way some of us have no right have no right to the throne of God but he's still he's still he's still he's still he's still he's still he still loves you anyway so he keeps blessing you and 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 blessing you just keeps on Oh, do you really know? Do you really know how blessed you are? Oh, Let the church of God say amen. amen. Let the church of God say amen again. Amen. We're so thankful that God has allowed us to be here in our right minds and that he has elongated us and allowed us to rise in this day. You know, the old church would say that in him we live and move and we have our very being. Just the other day I was talking to uh, the young men that I, that I mentor. I'm a, I'm a foster parent. I've been doing that for 15 years, and uh, my last one is about to go to college, and, and I was just telling him that I'm, I'm thankful that you're going to college. I'm thankful that you got an education, and I said, you may get a JD or MD, but I said, the best D you can have that has G-O in front of it, and that's God. Amen. The best education that we can ever have is that of Jesus, of God, his word, and his people. Because you see, beloved, life is going to happen to all of us. Yeah. And when life comes, the JD, the MD, or whatever D you have, it ain't going to sustain. It's going to only be God. Yeah. It's going to be his word, and it's going to be that which is brought by his people. I'm so thankful to be here with you today, West Oak Grove. It's always a blessing to be in the house of God. It's always a blessing to be here with you. And I hope that we can spend some time together in the sacred text as we try to explore and examine what God's words have to say. I want you to meet me in the book of uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7 through 12. We're going to get there in just a minute. And here, we're gonna, the lesson is titled Further In and Deeper Down. All right. This lesson is entitled Further In and Deeper Down. This lesson, beloved, was uh, brought to us by COVID and the thing that had happened while we were going through the vicissitudes of COVID. During this time of the last two and three years, we have seen a uh, gargantuan amount of death. Over a million people has uh, died. We make and justify the poor where he said life can be a crust of bread and a corner to sleep and a minute to smile and an hour to weep and a paint of joy to a peck of trouble and never allow because the moans come double. And for some of us, that is life. Life for us in the last two or three years has been brought about pain and death, job loss, unemployment, failing health, loss of loved ones, and the list goes on and on. And beloved, if we are not in tune with God's word, we may have seen those opportunities just as tragedy, just as bleak, just as despair, but God has a way of changing our trajectory in our mind, has a way of changing how we think about things. But just a minute, we're going to get in our text in a minute. But if you go in the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah was a prophet that God had commissioned from birth. 
The Bible said that God had raised them up because the people of God had, uh, was going into captivity. You remember, if you read the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah was best friends with Josiah. Him and Josiah were best friends, and Josiah had made reforms in the house of God, had brought people back all the way to God. And do you not know, we need restoration today. We got everything going on in the world today. We got everything going on. Houses are being broken up. School systems are being broken up. And you know what? It's not the government's job to take care of the world. It's our job. Democrat, Republican can't change the way of God. It's going to take God's people. You know, ever since the beginning of time, God has taken his people, has raised them up, commissioned them, and they tore the world up from left to right. Yeah. Jeremiah, beloved, if you read his story, God called him from the womb. He never got married. Never had pillow talk for the married folk. Come on now. Come on now. <laughs> Jeremiah uh, never had children. Jeremiah never had the family that we often enjoy. Jeremiah uh, was suffering time and time again, preaching to a people, and he couldn't even find one righteous person in the city of Jerusalem. Uh -huh. But then we get to chapter 20 in the book of Jeremiah, and Jeremiah said, God, I'm not going to speak your word. I'm not going to do what you asked me to do. He said, I feel like I'm a mockery. They make fun of me every single day because I'm a child of God. But then he remembered I got fire. He said, the word of God is like fire in my bones. And I got to tell it to everywhere I go. And I said, to, you know what? And I began to change my perspective. And God was taking Jeremiah further in and deeper down into his word. And God really was protecting him. The tragedy that he had spent was protection. You know, beloved, had, had he married somebody? They wouldn't have been faithful to God, and they may have brought him pain after pain after pain. Jeremiah, had he been famous in that time, would have been perhaps tempted to compromise. And so when you change your perspective about God's plan, what, what looked like tragedy in our eyes was a blessing to Jeremiah. Because he is now in the hall of God. You know what Jeremiah did? Jeremiah saved Daniel. And he saved Ezekiel because they read, Dan Daniel read Jeremiah's writings. And Daniel said, I'm not going to bow down and eat the king's meat because in 70 years, we're going back home. And so Jeremiah's life did not die in vain. And so, beloved, I just want you to understand that what may look like bleakness to us is an opportunity for God. We were, I'm going to tell you the story here and we get into our lesson. We were having an issue at COVID, maybe when COVID happened about how we were going to have church. Maybe y'all had the same issue. Actually, we were, we were debating each other. You know, we were some temples raised in the brothers meeting. You know, it happens sometimes. We, we were arguing. Some people said, we need to shut this thing down. And some people were like, no, nah, we need to do this and do that. And so I just sat back and listened. You know, sometimes the best time just sit back and listen. Don't say now. I would listen to what this brother was saying and I would listen to what this brother was saying and I asked all the brothers, eight of us in the room, and I said, well, where do you live at? They said, well, I live in North Memphis. I said, okay. I said, where do you live at? They said, I live in South Memphis. I said, well, where do you live at? I live in Black Haven, White Haven, whatever the case may be. I said, well, that's good. And like, brothers, like, well, they, they, you know, I'm, I'm the youngest one. They thought I was wet behind the ear, but I let them know I dried my ears out before I got to the meeting, so I wasn't wet, wet behind the ear. You feel, you feel what I'm saying? And the point I was trying to make, I would let them know, I said, well, the church is in North Memphis now. The church is in Whitehaven now. The church is in South Memphis now. I said, because what we can do is you can take uh, this Sunday, take your house and invite your neighborhood and have church there. And, and I'm going to take some people in my neighborhood. And we had church there. So now the church is in South Haven, Whitehaven now. COVID made churches everywhere now. So I, I told them, you understand that when God's people, if the church is in me, then guess what? What a great opportunity to go out and have church in my household and invite God's people. And guess what? The church began to grow with us. We baptized over eight or nine people. And beloved, I just want you to understand that sometimes God takes us further in and deeper down. Let's go into our text for this morning in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. You understand that uh, the protagonist of our text is our brother Paul. Brother Paul had been a Pharisee. The book of Philippians allowed us to understand that he was a Pharisee. He was of the tribe of Benjamin. He was a great man in the world's eye. But Paul said, I count those things as lost so that I may gain Christ. And the Bible said that he had met Christ on the road of Damascus. And he had been allowed to see some, some great things. 
He had allowed to go into the, the heavens and to see magnificent vision that no man had ever seen. And Paul said because of that, he had seen these things. God allowed him to go further in and deeper down and to experience some suffering. And I want to pick up our thought in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 at verse 7 uh, through 12. The Bible said, and lest I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities. Paul said, I take pleasure in my reproaches. I take pleasure in my needs. I take pleasure in my persecutions. I take pleasure in my distresses. I take pleasure uh, in all things because he said, for Christ's sake, for Paul said, for when I'm weak, uh, then I am made to be strong. You see, God uh, can take weakness and infirmities and make us strong to take us further in and deeper down. On October the 4th, 1987, there was a woman that, by the name of Jessica McClure that had fell down in an abandoned oil well. During the rescue, she fell uh, further in and she fell deeper down to the point that she broke a lot of her limbs. Therefore, the save of the rescuer and the person of O'Donnell had to pull her heart, which resulted in more broken bones, which resulted in more severe scars and even permanent damage to some parts of her body. But she survived and she is doing extremely well even until this day. The rescuer had to inflict major pain and to damage the baby for a moment to save her from death. The pressing question is, was the rescuer being harsh? Was the rescuer being harsh when he had to break some of her bones to save her? Was the rescuer being severe when he had to damage her permanently in order to save her? And we understand that it was for Jessica's salvation. And correspondingly, what if God had to take us further in and deeper down to break us? What if God had to amputate some of our limbs to save us? What if God had to remove some things in our life that may bring severe and permanent scar in order to make us what we have to be? What if God had to take us further in and deeper down in order to save us? You see, beloved, we see that God, and, and, and that's exactly what God does. He used suffering as a way to do that, just, with the, just like we read the scripture. before we, he, The psalmist said, before I was afflicted, I went astray. But now that he had been afflicted and experienced suffering, he said, now I keep his statutes. Now I know God. And point number one of this lesson, suffering disciplines our morality. Suffering disciplines our morality. In other words, Paul was given a thorn in the flesh not because he had sin, but rather God gave him this thorn to keep him from sinning. Paul said that a thorn in the flesh was given to him by a messenger of Satan to buffet him. And God, in his infinite wisdom, used suffering as a way to discipline our morality. And that all whom God uses, he carries them further in and deeper down. In order to be an elder in the Lord's church, you got to go further in and deeper down. In order to be used by God, God got to prune you and take you through some things so that you can be patient and know how to use it. There's a book called The Success Syndrome and where the author talks about those who get success but they can't sustain success because they don't have the character to deal with a lot of money. They don't have the character to deal with people and they don't have the character to deal and to sustain the blessings of God. And so beloved I just want to stop by and say that suffering is used in our life not because we had sin, but sometimes it is used to keep us from sinning. It's used to keep us from sinning. My, my grandmother would tell me, just keep living, young man, and God will show you all that you have. I know in my own personal life, beloved, went through two job layoffs and Somebody may feel morbid for me and had all types of things going on, but in the job layoff, you know, you know, that's how I start preaching. Was in the job layer. I had no idea. A young father, I was like, I'm going to Atlanta. I'm going to move. 
and I'm going to have, you know, do what I want to do, but it was in the job layoff that I began to read my word more and more. And I began to read my word more and more, and guess what? I wanted to talk about it more and more. And then I went to uh, a little bitty town in Mississippi, and had, no, had never been there, and guess what? Started preaching, and hadn't stopped sin. Sometimes God uses suffering to discipline our morality. I read a poem that said, I walked a mile with pleasure. She chatted all the way, but left me none the wiser for all she had to say. I walked a mile with sorrow, but never a word, said she. But all the things I learned from her, from her when sorrow walked with me. Suffering, beloved, sometimes is God's way of disciplining our morality. But not only does it discipline our morality, but suffering sometimes defines our mortality. What I mean by that is that suffering reminds us that we're just here for a little while. And then we're going to be with God after a while. God used this thorn in the flesh to remind Paul, as he said, how much Paul needed God. Sometimes, beloved, we define our greatness by our degrees. Sometimes we define our greatness by our socioeconomic status. Sometimes we define our greatness by our education, by our vehicle and the size of house we have. In other words, we equate our blessing only with material things. I was, uh, I'm an engineer by vocation and I was in Atlanta. Uh, sometimes I help churches build buildings. We are in uh, in Cordova, we were building a building at Wolf Church of Christ, we're building a building, and hopefully they'll be done by the end of the year. And I'm, I'm thankful about the, what God is doing through that church in Cordova. But I was in Atlanta one time meeting with a, a preacher, a well known preacher. They were building a building, and I was an engineer on that project. I'm not going to mention his name, and he began to, to brag about how big the building was. And I uh, and talking about how much millions of dollars he had in the bank and how other folks can't preach like him. And, you know, old Mississippi boy, I, I'm starting to get a little bit offended in the meeting because, you know, I remember growing up in Grandma's shack. Grandma didn't have a whole lot, but uh, she had some peas and some cornbread, and uh, she didn't own a car. But Grandma had love, and the whole neighborhood would come to Grandma Edith's house. And I said that we didn't have a whole lot, but we were rich because we had love in the house. You see, I, I got a little bit offended by this preacher, and so, you know, I tried to hold my peace and keep it very professional. I even changed how I talk about things. You know, how we, we do that a little bit. We talk a little proper, a little professional, but I got, out of, I got out of character a little bit. I say, you know, beloved, I said, brother, respectfully. You know, we say that when we want to correct somebody. I said, respectfully, sir. Uh, I said that, you know, I'm really not impressed. You know, I'm the engineer on your project. I said, I'm really not impressed because I say every time you talk about your blessing, it's always something material. You see, I said, when I read the Bible, I read that Jesus had a church, but it had no walls in it. You see, I told him, I, I, I'm not impressed by your building. I said, I like that. I didn't help in the church build buildings, so our buildings are not. They are a great asset, but I, I'm not impressed by that. I'm not impressed by your education. I'm not impressed by all the things you talked about. I said, but what I am impressed about, you have never said one time in a conversation that there were those outside on the street that was on crack or drug and they came in the church house and they got off crack because they met God. I said, you ain't never said nothing about the fact that there were those on the brink of the void. And they came in contact with Jesus. And because they came in contact with Jesus, they are still together today. I said, you ain't said nothing about the fact that there are those that are struggling every day, but because they come into God's house, they met Jesus, and now they are what they're, that's what Jesus is about. You see, beloved, see, we got to be careful because we allow the blessing to make us forget about who God is. You see, sometimes we overlook, we overlook the small people. But you know what I love about God? That God sees everybody. He sees everybody. He sees there, it don't matter about your how, whatever. God said, whosoever will, let him come. I was in Little Rock, Arkansas, and I, and I openly repent. Sometimes I get busy, and sometimes I have a habit. I'm doing this, and I'm doing that, and doing that, you know, trying to do whatever. And, and my mama said, boy, you got to slow down. I said, mama, you know, I'm going to slow down one day. But I was in Little Rock, Arkansas. At a preaching a thing, and my brother preached the paint off the wall. 
preach the, they preach the pain off the wall, boy. And good preaching. Well, you have good preaching, you're stopping the car. Sometimes good preaching will make you stop the car and cry a little bit. Got through with the, the lectureship in Little Rock, North Little Rock. That, that's, my, that's my home. We should live there. And I was just going around trying to see. And um, the Spirit of God led me to Burger King. I don't even usually eat Burger King like that, but I was hungry. And I pulled into Burger King, and I saw this lady sitting in the front of it. And uh, I was going to go to the drive through but I said, let me just go out and see what, what was going on. And began to talk to her. She was very articulate, very, very articulate lady. And I said, hmm. And she began to tell me her story that, you know, she, she was uh, uh, dating a guy, and they had broken up, and her mom and daddy had put her out the house, and and, um, and she had showed me the, the text messages that, that happened because her mom and daddy, she didn't want to, her mom and daddy was into some, you know, bad stuff, but she didn't want to do that. So they kicked her out the house because she didn't want to give her money for their habits, you know. And so I sat there and talked with this lady, and I said, come on the inside. And, you know, and, and I gave her a few dollars, and, and I told her, I said, you know, sister, I know you think you, that I'm helping you, but you really are helping me. You really are helping me. I say, you know, so many times we overlook people like in your condition. We overlook, we, we, we're so busy. We don't take the time to slow down and to see. But, you know, God, hey, God, you remember, hey, God, she named the God, the God who sees. And I say, you know, sister, I say, you helping me. I say, I'm going to repent of all this business. I'm going to take time to go out and look for people that may need to help like you. Because, you know, I say, you know, sister, I'm one step away. We all are one step away from tragedy. We're one step away from heartache and whatever. So I said, you know, it's you today, but guess what? It can be me tomorrow. You know? And so I want to charge the church today, if I can. Let's slow down. Let's make time. It's good to go out and have a good time and go to the movies or whatever it can be, but schedule some time in your week, maybe one hour a week, and go out and look for people or where you can serve them. Because it's them today, but a stroke or a health situation can be, it can make us tomorrow. And so I want to encourage you, my beloved, that suffering, as Paul would say in our text, that a thorn was given to him to define his mortality and that let him know that you must depend on God. Many great men and women once are here, but now they are gone. Brother Arneas Crenshaw, one of my great preachers, he, he was here, but now he's not here anymore. Brother R.C. Wells and Brother Jack Evans Sr. was here, but now they're not here anymore. Men and women come and men and women go. Well, we need to understand that we must always put our hope in God. Beloved, not only that, I want you to see the, uh, uh, the uh, effect or the result and the extent of our suffering. You know, it really depends on us. It depends on our thinking. Some of us will triumph and suffering and some of us will be defeated solely based on our mindset and solely based on our faith. You see, beloved, we need to understand that God uses suffering as a way to prune us and to make us better. If you got your Bible, let's read a little bit. Go in your Bibles to John chapter 15. Matter of fact, I tell you what, we could go to Luke 13 first. Luke chapter 13, I want to just Paint upon the canvases of your mind and to show you that suffering is God's tool. Suffering is God's way that he uses it to help us that it produces a great result in what it has to be. The Bible says to us in Luke 13 verse 6, and he also spoke this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard and he came seeking fruit on it and found none. Sound familiar? Sometimes there are seasons in our life where we ain't what we should be. There are seasons in our life that we are dealing with things and we're just not what we should be. But thank God for his grace and mercy. The Bible said in verse 7, then he said to the keeper of his vineyard, look, for three years I have come seeking fruit on this fig tree and I find none. Cut it down. Why does it use up the ground? But he answered and said to him, sir, let it alone. He said, let it alone. This year, let it alone. This year also, until I dig around it. (laughs) 
and fertilize it. And if it bears fruit, well, but if not, after that, you can cut it down. Jesus in this parable, if you look at the parable in the context, the owner of the vineyard is God. And God has a way that anytime we sin, we must be, it must be dealt with. But the keeper of the vineyard in this parable is Jesus. And he's acting like an intercessor, advocating on our behalf. And so when God comes and sees that sometimes we have unfruitful seasons of our life, God says in his infinite justice, said, cut it down because it has sinned. But Jesus tells God, hold up, God. Let me dig a prune this tree. Let me dig around this tree. Let me cut away the bad things. Let me allow uh, seasons to come and maybe I to reduce that tree down to nothing. Let me cut and fertilize this tree so that the tree can grow, so that the tree can be strong, and that the tree can bear fruit. You see, beloved, suffering, as we think about the effects of it, God uses it as a way to make us better. And see, beloved, I'm so glad that we serve Jesus, that he is our tabernacle, that he was available, and that he is all that he is. You see, beloved, a stick in my hand is just a stick, but a stick in Moses' hand with the help of God led the people out of Egypt. You see, beloved, uh, a voice, uh, and my voice singing ain't going to do no, no good, but a voice like David and Seba and these other songs, it blessed the congregation. You see, beloved, God can take us and make us what we are and make us better and make us who we are because Jesus is our tabernacle. The Bible says in the beginning was the word and the word was God with God and the word was God and the word became flesh and it tabernacled among us. Jesus said that he is available to all those that call upon him, that trust in him and that's willing to walk with him. Why are you saying Jesus was divine enough to take two fishes and five loaves? And he was healing enough to sit down with those who were sinners and poor. Jesus was divine enough to give sight to the blind, but he was human enough to see and have compassion upon the people. Jesus was divine enough to moonwalk on the ether of the blue sea, but he was human enough to enjoy himself at a wedding feast in Canaan. He was divine enough to forgive men and women of their sin, but he was human enough to stoop down and to get his hands dirty and to write in the ground in John chapter 8. And aren't you glad that we serve a God that doesn't mind getting his hands dirty, doesn't mind getting his feet wet so that he can prune us and make us and help us to be what we ought to be. He was divine enough to heal the blind, the maimed, and the lame, but yet he was human enough to wash his disciples' feet. He was divine enough to resurrect people and things from the dead, but he was human enough to cry at his friend Lazarus' funeral. The Bible said that Jesus wept. And when you get to John chapter 11, in that verse 25, Jesus said to Martha and Mary, I am the resurrection and I am the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. He asked them, do you believe this? You see, beloved, if we're going to go further in and deeper down, we must understand that when my pain leads to prayerfulness, the consequence is maturity. When pain leads to patience and endurance, the consequence is victory. So we must understand that I must see my pain and see my suffering, not as a way for God to punish me, but as a way for God to prune me. I must see my suffering as a way of God making me better. And I must have Paul's attitude for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. I must have Paul's attitude that when I'm in prison, God can take this imprisonment and use it for it and to help me establish the kingdom and to further the borders of the kingdom. I must have the mindset of Paul that whatever God decides is fine with me. I must have the mindset of Joel that though you slay me, yet I'm going to serve you. That if a man die, will he live again all the appointed days of my uh, on my I will wait until my change comes. I must have the mindset of Moses, with the Bible says by faith, that he chose to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing of pleasure of sin for a season. I must have the mindset of Paul where he said that this light of affliction is but for a moment, but it's working in me a far more exceeding and eternal way of glory. For I don't look at the thing which I can see or the things I can touch because those things, they are temporary. But I cast my mind and put my mind on the things which I cannot see. For Paul said, for those things, they are eternal. For this we know that if this earth 
earthly house, this tent be destroyed. We have a building for God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heaven, for in this house we grow, earnest the desire to be clothed with our habitation, which is from heaven. We must have the mindset of the Hebrews right away. He said, we are not of the number of them that draw back unto perdition, but we believe unto the saving of our soul, not faith, that the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, for by it the elders obtain a good testimony. We must have the mindset of Paul where he said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to all those who believe, to the Jews first and also to the Greek, for in the gospel the righteousness of God has been revealed, for as it is written, the just by faith shall live. We must have the mindset of Paul as he wrote the title, for the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly love, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age, looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm saying, beloved, that whatever we are, we must see that God takes us further in and deeper down to help us to be what we ought to be. And beloved, I'm not a long-winded preacher, so I'm about to make my, my point to my seat. Y'all shouldn't say amen too loud. <laughs> Jesus, beloved, <clears throat> tells us over and over again that suffering is God's way of helping us. As we go back to Paul's text, Paul said he asked God to remove it, didn't he? God said, I'm not going to remove the storm, but I'm going to help you in the midst of it. And he said, Paul said, I'm going to take pleasure in all of those things. Why? Because he said, when I'm weak, then I'm made to be strong. You remember in the Garden of Gethsemane when Jesus was praying you remember, beloved, he asked God to take this cup from you. A very human experience. All of us would have asked the same thing. And the Bible says that God did not take away the cup, but God allowed angels to come. And the text said that the angels strengthened Jesus so that he could endure what was going to happen at Golgotha. And Jesus lets us know that suffering is what God used to help us. There was a farmer that Eula digs a well nine feet for a normal season. And he went and told all the other farmers that you need to dig further in and deeper down this season in order for you to accommodate the dry season. He said, I got to dig 30 feet. And by him digging 30 feet meant more time that year, more money he had to pay and more effort. But in order to handle the dry season, the farmer told all of them, we got to go further in and deeper down. The famine hit that year and the farmer had dug his well further in and deeper down. And guess what happened? When the famine came, he had enough water to take care of his plants. He had enough water to take care of his crops and his family and the bay and all those types of things. And he told all the farmers, see, if you had it went further in and deeper down, you would have been able to handle the famines of your life. Can I encourage you, beloved, to go further in and deeper down into your Bible studies? Can I encourage you to go further in and deeper down into your worship and your praise and your singing and your love and your prayer and your service and to God and for humanity? And Jesus said that if you do those things, he said, I will tell you what you like. I will tell you like a man that built his house upon the rock that life is going to happen. But if you build your life upon Jesus, guess what's going to happen? He said, you're going to have what you need. You see, beloved, you're going to have uh, what you need. You know, that, that was a... Uh, old story that I often used to tell uh, the people there, and I call it a tale of two shit. I told this at Coldwater a few weeks ago, but I'm going to tell it again because it, it, it highlights uh, the point about Jesus and building uh, his, his, his master there. But the text tells us that there was a ship in 1909 that had been commissioned to build. The, the, the story said that they had got all the engineers to go and build this master ship. This ship, beloved, was said was never supposed to sink because it was made by the ingenuity of man. Um, they said that this ship had over 3,500 rivets to put it together, and it took over three years uh, to build. And they said that this ship uh, had um, on its maiden voyage about three different classes of people, and that there were some those there on the ship that had planned to go to America for a new life, for a new house, and for a new calling. 
They said that uh, over six times that this ship had received warning signs that it was not supposed to keep sailing and that it was not supposed to keep going. But the men on the ship, that their eyesight could not see so far, and they said, we can make it because this ship is invincible. And you know the story that this ship hit an iceberg, and uh, this ship called the Titanic, and this ship sank, and the captain of this ship could not save those on the board. But in my essay, I made a transition, but I said there's another ship that you can read about in the pages of God called the whole ship of Zion. And I can hear the Bible saying that unless the Lord builds the ship or builds the house, then those that labor, they labor in vain, they build it. You see, the builder of the Titanic, they labor in vain because they invite God into the equation. For I hear Jesus saying that upon this rock, I will build my church for the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I heard that this ship of Zion was not built with man's hand, nor what it was paid for by silver or gold. The Bible said, knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct or received by tradition of your father, but you were redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus. And beloved, I read that this ship... Uh, had a captain that purchased it over 2,000 years ago. And Jesus said that it doesn't matter about your race, your class, or whatever that you have done, just bring me your broken life. Whosoever will, let him come. Come unto me, all you that labor in a heaven lay, and I will give you rest. And the Bible said that he opened the doors of this ship over 2,000 years ago. You see, so many folks are open. The, the doors of the church are open. The church, the door, the church door were open 2,000 years ago, and it's never shed sin. And I'm so glad that Jesus said that you don't have to have a certain amount of money. You don't have to be a Democrat or Republican. But he said, but in every nation, say every nation, whoever nation, whoever fears him and works right is accepted by him. And I heard them say that over 2,000 years ago that there's no dangers in this water, that this ship has been sailing, it's been sailing for a mighty long time. And the question becomes, are you on that ship? Are you on that ship? Because Jesus said that if we own this ship, we have home with him in heaven, that God will take us further in and deeper down. I hope, beloved, you understand that whatever you're going through, perhaps we have somebody here that may be going through things, maybe lost a loved one, maybe have been in bereavement, maybe financial health problem, whatever the case may be. I hope you understand, beloved, that Paul said that God uses those things as a way to take us further in and deeper down. And I hope and pray that God will be with you and bless you upon this journey. May we all pray together. Father God, we come to thee with bent knees and bowed bodies, humble before thy throne of grace. We ask you, Father, to help us, to comfort us, to strengthen us. And we hope and pray, Father, that this lesson will be just a picture of how you take us further in and deeper down. Father God, help us to understand that suffering is a natural part of life and it's your way of using the, to, the prune tools to help us become what we ought to be. Father God, help us to seek people and to meet them where they are. Be with this congregation, be with the leaders, be with everybody that's here. In Christ we pray, amen. amen. Stand to your feet. Someone to care, someone to care, someone to share. Someone to share all of your troubles like no other, like no other can do. He'll come down from the sky, down from the sky, he'll wipe those Tears from your eyes, from your eyes, tears from your eyes. You we have time today, church. You are God is calling. God is allowing us to be here in this place for the opportunity for you, to yes, share with him today. Jesus cares. Jesus cares. For you. Jesus knows. In this world. And he's available. Seems cold. The world is often cold, but God has a place for it. We can let it be known today as we stand in the house of God. Jesus cares. And he knows. Thank you, God, for 
all you do. Cares for you. Jesus cares for us. When the tears from your eyes. We have time today, church. We have your time. heart bleeds inside. You are a child. And he cares, and he cares for you. Yes, Jesus cares for you. I've got someone to care, to care. Someone to, I've got someone to share, to share. Someone to share. All of your troubles, all of your trouble, like no other, like no other can do, like no other can do. He'll come down, down from the sky, from the sky, he'll wipe the tears from your eyes, from your eyes, tears from your eyes. You are his child, you are his child, and he cares, and he cares for you. Yes, Jesus cares for you. I've got someone to care, to care. I've got someone to share. To share, so what to share? All of your troubles, all of your trouble, like no other, like no can do, like no other can do. He'll come down, down from the sky, from the sky, down from the sky. He'll wipe the tears from your eyes. From your eyes, tears from your eyes. You are his child, you are his child, and he cares. And you are his child, you are his child, and he cares. And you are his child, you are his child, and he cares. And he for you. Jesus cares for you. Amen. Let's praise the Lord on this morning. <laughs> Further in and deeper down. Further in and deeper down. My takeaway from that is we just have to go a little bit further. Don't quit. Just go a little bit further. Further in and deeper down. We thank God for sending Brother Zachariah Smith on a, uh, this way this morning. We thank him for sending him to this place. Did he not preach the word of God from his heart? Very, very timely message. Very, very inspiring to me. I plan to go deeper. Deeper in the word of God and deeper in doing those, those things that I know that God will have me to do. And it's my prayer that you would do the same thing. Amen. Let's give Brother Zachariah a round of applause. And as a result of his message, we see that some have come. We have Sister Emma Johnson, it says here, she's been in the hospital at Methodist Germantown since Wednesday. Please pray for she and the family. And it says, I'm having problems in my life and I need your prayer. And she's asking prayer on behalf of herself and her family. So let's just keep Sister Emma Johnson in our prayers. That's the mother of Sister Aretha Thompson. Amen. Amen. And we have Kaylin Threat. He says, I'm having problems in my life and I need prayers for my family and myself. I'm asking prayer for strength, prayer for patience and understanding, and for God's guidance in his decision making. He says, I want to thank the church for your prayers on behalf of myself. Amen. Amen. Rashanta Wallace, she says, I need prayer for my family as well as myself. Prayer for strength, patience, and understanding, and guidance, God's guidance in her decision making. 
Sherry Wallace says, I need prayer for my family as well as myself. Prayer for strength, patience, and understanding, and also for God's guidance in her decision making. Jerlene Roberts comes, she says, I need prayer for my family and myself. Prayer for strength. And she asking, she's asking special prayer for Sister Wanda Hayes, Sister Annette Freeman, Sister Tasha Powell, and Frankie Jones. She's asking special prayer on behalf of these members as they are battling different elements at this time. We want to definitely keep them in prayer. And, and, I, and, I, and I must say this right now, Jerlene, I guess we were thinking the same thing because I woke up this morning with Sister Annette on my mind, Sister Annette Freeman. We, we definitely want to keep her in our prayers because, I mean, we never know. Brother Zachariah even said this morning, we know where we are right now, but this afternoon, something could hit us like, a, like an 18-wheeler and would knock us off of our feet. So let's not ever be found being in a position where we think, we think it won't happen to me. You never know. You never know. Here today, it used to be gone tomorrow. It's here today, gone in a few minutes. So we thank God again for allowing us to be able to come here this morning and express what's on our hearts. And although many of us did not fill out a form, but God knows the desires of our hearts. He knows everything that's going on with us even now, even things that we don't share with other people, even the feelings that we may have, but we know that God knows. And what we're going to do at this time, we're going to all stand corporately and go to our Heavenly Father in prayer on behalf of all the ones who asked for special prayer and for ourselves as well. Oh, Lord, won't you show, show me the way. Could you show me, show me the way? Listen. I'm down here, standing here all by myself. And Lord, I need, said I need your Lord, you pick me up yes, sad, and sad, sad. you turn me around and you place my feet on solid ground. Lord, would you show, show me, show me the way. I'm your child, Lord, I'm your child, Lord. Just think about all the I'm things that you know that you need God to do for you. Oh, Lord, and first of all, realize oh, that it's child. only God that can do that. Sometimes we try to do things on our own, but we fall every time, don't we? So just please find it in your heart I'm to ask here, God to do those here. things that we may think that are impossible. And I need but just know that God can do it. He's done these things in the past. So why wouldn't he do it in the future? All we have to do is be found in the position that we need to receive everything we need from God. Let us go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Dear Lord, with bowed heads and humble hearts, we come again as humble as we know how. First of all, thanking you for all the many wonderful blessings that you bestowed upon each and every one of us. Lord, we thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for everything that you've given us thus far in this day. Yes. Thank you for enabling us to arise this morning, dress ourselves, drive to this place, and to be able to walk into this building without the assistance of anybody. And Lord, for that we say thank you. Lord, we don't want to take anything for granted. 
because we know it's all in your hands. Whatever you see fit, that's what's going to happen. Even if it means putting us on our backs. Lord, we know that you will do that as well. But Lord, we thank you for just knowing that if you put us on our back, one day you're going to put us on our feet again. We thank you for that. Lord, we thank you for being with, with, with us right now as we're able to stand here and petition you. We thank you for the sick. We thank you for the afflicted. We thank you for all of that because, Lord, that just shows us every day the mighty powers that you have. Lord, we ask that you be with all of those who are going through different ailments at this time. We also ask that you be with the ones who are going through bereavement. Lord, we know bereavement is something that's going to happen to all of us. But, Lord, we know it's not that we try to figure out where our loved ones are going. It's just the point that we know that we're going to miss our loved ones. And, Lord, we ask that you give us that comfort that we need. Lord, we ask that you touch all the members of this particular congregation who are going through different sicknesses at this time. Lord, be with their mind. Be with their mind. Be with their mind, Lord. I pray that they are not being stressful at this time and not worrying about what's going to happen. Just give them that peace that surpasses all understanding. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we ask that you be with all the ones who've come this morning asking for special prayer. Lord, you know the desires of their hearts. We ask that you grant. And Lord, we ask that you be with us all. We ask that you forgive us of our sins, for we know that there are many. Lord, we ask that you lift us up when we have a bowed down head. And Lord, when we can't see the way, let help us to realize that you are the way and that you will help us. Lord, we thank you for everything that has been done thus far in our service, and we give it back to you. Lord, we pray a special prayer at this time for Brother Zachariah. Lord, we ask that you touch he and his family at this time. Lord, continue to give him the strength that he needs to convey, to convey your word to a dying and perishing world. Lord, we ask that you be with us all. And now as we prepare to go into the furtherance of our service, we ask that you lead and guide us in the way that you would have us go. It's in your name that we pray and we ask it all. Let us all together say amen. amen. Show the way, show, show me. Show me the way, the way. Lord, please show. Could you show me the way, the way? Said I'm down, I'm down, I'm down, down here, Lord. And I need, and I need your Lord. Show me, show could you show me, show me the way? Yeah. Let's give Brother Zachariah another hand cap of praise for doing a magnificent job this morning, putting us in God's word. Great job. I'm here now to uplift the Lord's Day offering to depart today. Let us give as God has profited us to be able to give this morning. Those that have to give, let us give, not give grudgingly, but give from only from my heart. If you don't have it to give, then God understand your situation. Let us give thanks for this offering. Lord, we thank you for this offering that has been raised here, that we are going to be raised here today to benefit your kingdom. Pray, Father, that that's what to be used to do for. In Jesus' name, I give thanks. Amen. Amen. You know, it's, it's good, y'all. It's good to listen to your elder peoples. I want to say to uh, Sherry Ann Wallace, she said something to me years ago. Brother, come get this. Brother, come get this. That stuck with me today. I was raising four daughters, and I was young, and then three more kids got dumped on me. I was almost to lose my mind. And she said, Ronnie, one day, they're going to be grown and gone. I'm 64 years old. I want to say to Sherry, I appreciate that. They are grown and gone. And now they're calling me. 
I want to say to Susie Effie Moore, there was a time when I couldn't speak as well. And I was criticized. And Effie used to pull me to the side and she would talk to me and teach me how to speak. That I want to say to her, Effie. I appreciate that. I want to say to the young man that's sitting here that I ask him for help. All you got to do, son, is call up Brother Powell and we can talk. There's too many of our young men that's going through problems in life. And we are sitting here and not helping them. If you need help, son, just call me. We can talk. We can ride and talk. You have Brother Smith sitting here. You have Brother uh, Jameson sitting here. You have Brother Taylor sitting here. You can call us, son. We're here to help. You don't open your mouth and ask so we can help you. You're asking the church to pray for you, but you have to talk to someone, son. You have to talk to someone. God is a good God. And he will put peoples in your life. And we can help you. Young ladies, there's young other ladies here can help you. They can help you. You got Sherry Ann Wallace, you got Sister Jameson, you got this young lady sitting here. I'm looking right at her, I've been known for years. And can't hardly call her name. They can help you. They can help you. You got to open your mouth and let us know what's going on. We go through these things every day. I'm getting old, and we can help you. We can help you, okay? At this time, let us remember the cross. Jesus, when he died out on Capitol, he suffered, and he died there. He did no wrong. But yet, they killed him. Jesus gave sight to the blind. Jesus healed the sick. And yet, he hung on that cross. And he said these words, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. The bread we're about to receive represents his body that hung out there on Calvary. The wine we're about to receive, the fruit of the vine, represents the blood that he shed it out on the cross. Let us give thanks for the body and the blood of Jesus. Father, we thank you for this bread to represent your son's body. We thank you for this wine to represent your son's shed blood. I pray that my brother and sister would take it with clean hands and clean heart, for thou shalt come again. Amen. You may be served. Jesus. You've been good to me, oh Jesus. You've been good, so good to me, oh Jesus. You've been good to me, and you have, you So, so good to me. Well, now, once I met a man, when I was oppressed by sin, he opened up his arms. He let me come on in. When I grow weak in the fall, he's there to catch my head. Oh, I feel so good, so good and strong. All I can ever say, say, my, 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 Jesus. 
You've been so good. You've been so good, so good to me. I want to tell you, Jesus, you have been so, so good to me. My, 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 Jesus, you've been so Amen, amen. What a wonderful spent morning. What a wonderful morning to be here to get a word from God. We thank God for that. We've had a wonderful time on this morning, and I pray that God has touched your heart. And now as we prepare to leave, we have, um, we don't really have that many announcements. One is coming from Brother Wallace. It says that the Norris Road Church of Christ will be having a vacation Bible school this coming Saturday. All the youth are invited. And it says here specifically that if you're going to bring your youth, make sure they bring a change of clothes because they're going to have a water slide. So in essence, what this is saying is the Norris Road Church of Christ there in Memphis is having their vacation Bible school. And Brother Wallace will be speaking at that on this coming Saturday. And he's asking that the youth here at West Oak Grove make plans to be a part of that as well. Amen? Amen. 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 There are no other announcements that we have at this time, so I'm going to go on and recognize the visitors. We have... Is that Ronnie Maccabee? Ronnie Maccabee. Amen. And Ronnie is the guest of Brother Zachariah. Amen. We're glad to have you with us on today. And then we have, um, it's Weber. I can't make out that first name, but it's Weber. Okay. He's in the back back there. Glad to have you with us as well. Amen. Those are the only cards that I have, so I'm going to ask if you're visiting with us and I did not receive your card, we're going to ask that you stand at this time as, so that we may recognize you. Do we have any other visitors? Amen. Well, we, we thank you, Ronnie and Tim Key. Okay, he said that's, that's good. Well, Mr. Weber, I'm going to say. We're glad to have you guys with us on today, and feel free on any given Sunday to stop by here, the West Oak Grove Church of Christ. Well, we'll be here praising our God. Amen? Amen. Amen. And we hope that you've gained something. Amen. And we hope that you've gained something today that you can apply to your daily lives that will make you a better servant for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? Amen. So, if nothing else, we're going to stand at this time, and we're going to have a verseful song. And we're going to be dismissed. Let's give Brother Perry a, a hand this morning. Amen. Still have joy. I still have joy. After all the things I've been through. Don't you know that I still have, still have joy. I still have so much joy. After all, after all the things I've been through. Don't you know I still have, still have love. I still have love. God's love. After all, after all the things I've been through, don't you know that I still have, still have hope. I still have hope. so much hope. Still have hope. After all, after all the things I've been through, don't you know that I still have. Still have my mind, I still have my mind, have my mind. After all, after all the things I've been, don't you know that I still have, still have my mind, I still have my, I still have my mind. After all, after all the things I've been, after all, after all the things. After all, after all the things I don't you know that I still have my mind. Amen, amen, amen. Let us go to our Heavenly Father. Dear Lord, we thank you at this time for allowing us to be able to assemble here this morning. Lord, we hope, pray, and trust that everything that was done 
was pleasing, pleasing and acceptable in your sight. Lord, we thank you for allowing us to be here. And Lord, we ask that you be with us as we depart from this place to go to our respective homes. It's in your name that we pray, and we ask it all. Amen.